Excuse me. You haven't given us the reason of why um, either Article Three courts are insufficient uh, or courts martial, uh, if, if, if ne necessary, to handle some of these uh, cases. Now, um, in particular, the, uh, the Article Three, the notion, um, and what I heard, was kind of a cost-benefit. If we need to, in fact, appoint more judges or provide more resources, Congress can do that very easily without offending the Constitution. I would just note that it isn't just the provision on um, uh, confrontation that you're talking about offending, you're also talking about the right to a jury trial. Right. Um, and so the, the, this, you, you are looking to upend some of our basic requirements in the Constitution. I was the first one that said that I was the first one to say, Mike, that there are, there are constitutional problems with the proposal. That being said, I think there are more profound constitutional problems with where we are today. Because court martials, as I understand court martials, and Dave Graham can correct, can correct me if I'm wrong, court martials are, are for the purpose of bringing soldiers to trial, American soldiers. These are American soldiers. And the other, my other argument would be that Article Three courts, again, in the context of jury trials and the thousands of people who are, need to be brought to trial, are, and I would suggest, are ill-equipped, unequipped to go forward with that process. We have time for one more. When, when I first heard you say this, I thought maybe I was misunderstanding, but you've answered a question that makes me think I'm not. And, and there are you know, profound issues, and you've raised them with the procedure that you're describing. But I'm, I'm concerned about what I think I hear you saying about the substance of these courts, the, the actual charges. I mean, even the military commissions have not proposed to charge people for anything other than crimes which they have committed. I, are you talking about a trial to determine whether someone is dangerous? No, 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 no. So you're still talking about trying crimes, them for... for... Crimes. All I'm saying is the only people who can be put into this category are those who are deemed to present a threat based on intelligence information. If they don't present, if they're not deemed to present a threat, then we have to, I think, would release them. Those who are, who are deemed to present a threat would be brought to trial based on acts that they've done, not for the crime of a threat. The, the other issue is that don't you agree that because we haven't run Article 5 tribunals, that even if you did this, that would have to be done under international law as a prerequisite to doing this, to avoid violating, uh, violating their rights under, the, under, under Geneva. Leading to what? Well, it's, of course, if you have someone who's entitled to prisoner of war status, it's a crime to try them other than by courts martial. Right, but the other thing that, that also needs to be done, very frankly, is we need to, I think, begin the process of defining what are they. Are they POWs, are they criminals, or if they fall into what I call the hybrid, which lends itself to the, to the um, articulation or proposal of a, of a domestic court, terror court because they fall into a hybrid which is neither here nor there. Thank you very much.